I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Anne Nelson. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Um, I'm great. Thanks, Angel. It's um, terrific talking to you, but I have to say good morning to you. <laughs> You're in the next part of the world, right? What part of the world are you in right now? I live in Queensland, Australia, and that's right up the top, and mm. it's a very tropical area where I live. How does my future look? <laughs> <laughs> It looks great, right? Your future. Yeah, well, you're definitely in my future, right? Like, you're a day ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> I am. It is Monday morning here. Wow. It is Sunday evening here. Well, that's great. That's great. Well, Anne, please do tell me which of your talents that you've been operating in is responsible for us connecting at this time. Oh, uh, um, I have a podcast show. Yeah. Retire well. <laughs> retire well, retire happy. So that's how we connected by being fellow podcasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say it like podcaster, family, family, podcaster. That is great. I'm really intrigued that you have a podcast, especially about retirement. Um, where did the inspiration for that come? Uh, it started with a book, but it started from myself finding myself a widow and uh and I thought I was prepared for retirement but as it turned out I wasn't really so I had a a lot to learn hmm, intriguing so what did you name the podcast ah retire well okay. retire happy okay yeah makes sense makes sense so who did you learn the skills necessary to uh podcast one and two speak about retirement I was, I suppose I had to interview people um, for my book. And so then I was led on to p be told that I should um, follow it up by becoming a podcaster and keep on interviewing people. And it's been a, an incredible experience. All the people that I've met and all the information I've learned has been wonderful. Now, I know of people that are struggling to get their podcast going, right? Someone just told you you should start podcasting and you started. That speaks that speaks huge, uh, hugely about who you are. Like, you get things done, don't you? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes. And if you don't know something, well, you've got to try and find out about how to do it, I suppose. And I suppose that's to do with investing or other things to do with retirement, being happy, because it's not all about the money. Um, we can have money and we can not have a happy retirement. So there's a lot of lot lot to learn. Yeah, there is a lot to learn when it comes to retirement. Um, I'm glad that you are sharing your experiences so that others can learn. Um, so why will you continue? I mean, you've been at this for a bit, Anne. Why will you continue to repeat this skill of teaching and helping others? Because I'm in, I'm enjoying um, talking to the people I uh, that I've interviewed. I suppose it's um, and passing on what I'm learning. Um, life is it. We're not meant to stay still in life. So I believe that we are meant to keep improving and to keep learning. So. I'm happy to share what I've come across. That's great. Tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. I joined Toastmasters. Oh, there we go. There we go. How does that make you feel? Toastmasters International. Um, they're all around the world too. It's it's a great learning experience and it's good for people to gain their confidence in speaking and also teaching you about structure hmm. it's not yeah it's it's um and i'm a, i continue to go and um it's a place where you can hang out with like-minded people i suppose and you get um feedback and uh it teaches you about timing and listening skills so there's a lot to learn there there's definitely a lot to learn and listening Ooh. I had a hard lesson on that. <laughs> ah, really? 
Yeah, yeah. I well, definitely am learning and I continue to learn. Uh, why would you suggest someone out there uh, do what you've done by by really never being too old to keep moving? Um, I'm learning about that as well. You've got to keep your mind active. I spoke recently to a lady, Amy Wilson, in from New Zealand, and she is a brain expert. And she talks about we need to keep our brain active and do brain gym just as well we, as well as keeping our bodies active. Um, so that was very, very interesting. Hmm. I've never heard of the word brain gym before. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice term though. It's a nice term. I know one of my friends uh, speaks of Sudoku being something that is brain exercise. Um, do you know of Sudoku? Yeah, I'm sure you know of Sudoku. Yeah? Yes, yeah. yes, but I... I, I don't play it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm really struggling with understanding it fully. But I, I, I definitely need, like my wife and I were speaking about it like not more than an hour ago. We need to do some Sudoku uh, because it definitely helps. Now, tell me, my friend, um, can I now invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water? Sounds wonderful. Oh. Uh, and can you share with us your earliest childhood memory? That's a, that's a good one. Probably back in primary school, I suppose. Yeah, going to school and I used to like to run, I suppose. So it was running around in the playground and competing. I used to compete in athletics and running competitions mm. Mm. and my proud moment having my father come along and watch I suppose because he was always busy working so when your parents can take the time to share their life share your life um so I suppose that was a happy childhood memory intriguing so what's what sport what athletic thing were you doing at that point in time I used to do um running sprinting okay okay and even high jumping I wouldn't be able to do that now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, I do not think anyone will expect that of you. Uh, how old do you think you were back then at that time? You're in primary school, so it's what, uh, five, six? Oh, I think I was more like seven. Okay. Yeah. You put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think this memory is so clear? I suppose because I shared it with my father. Hmm. He came and watched me. Because my parents were always busy working. They always were self-employed, so they always had little bit small businesses. I was actually part of my growing up. My parents always shifted a lot. They'd have a business for a couple of years and then they'd move to another place and have another business. So we were always continually on the move. And by the time I was 21, I'd lived in six different hotels. So I've been brought (laughs) – they uh, used to live on the premises and they would be the – we call them licensed viculators, so they had the license to run the hotel and we used to live on the premises, so that's something different that I've done. I have lived in a lot of different places. Hmm. That is intriguing. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Yes. I love the idea of the life you've lived where value, if you would, came in the form of family support. And at the same time, understanding that you've lived a life where where the business part of it, which is the finances, came into into being as well, right? And it's intriguing to me that now you're operating in a place where you're helping people understand the values um, that one should decide. Like you said, it you could have money and still not be happy at retirement, right? Um, that, is, my friend, is pretty intriguing how it connects. Right. Thank you. <laughs> it's um. And the older I get, the more I realise that um, you set yourself up with your finances if you start early. So I'm listening to all the experts now that, you know, they say you should pay yourself first and put some money aside for later on. Yeah, it's it's one of the things us entrepreneurs tend to fail at, right? Um, we, We definitely always want to put the money back into the business, right? Mm. It's either that or we take all the money up front right um so great great yeah yeah 
Yeah, we um, we uh, live in a very disposable world, and uh, we've come become very used to having everything now. But um, it doesn't work in the end. If you've spent all your money now, you won't have anything left for later on. Mm. Well, I love that you're helping people with that, Anne. I'd like to know if you fast forward to when you were 12 years old. What was your favorite song? 12. Well, I used to like the Beatles, but that's before then, isn't it? Um, because I'm uh, possibly older than you. <laughs> um, probably just a prob- bit. <laughs> probably an Elvis Presley song. <laughs> right. Tell me the name of one song. Oh, my goodness, you are putting me on the spot. Love me tender. All right, there we go. There we go. Well, Anne, it's fascinating how these things connect, right? Even from the point of time when your father supported you by being there, your your cry was love me tender, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're a psychologist. <laughs> Well, Anne, we have arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. Um, We're going to move pretty quickly here. Anne, are you ready? Yes. Anne, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? My children when they're ready to learn. Are you married? I am a widow and I am have a partner. How many children do you have? Two. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Sometimes I do. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Less than eight. All right. And after 1,001 conversations in three months in 2016, I came up with a workbook. The name of it is called Yours. It stands for your own unique real self. And the idea is, as you answer questions you uncover your mission called your own unique real statement. If you had to share with us, Anne, your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who Anne Nelson is, what would you say that is? Life is meant to be lived. We should be happy and help people and stay positive. Love it. Anne Nelson, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? You only get one life, so make sure you enjoy it and live it to the best you can. And Nelson, this was a great pleasure. I'll tell you one more time. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. It's been great chatting with you. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, And for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.